Welcome to Nancy's Bookshelf, a program of conversation and readings with local and regional writers. Now, here's your host, Nancy Wigman. Throughout her life, successful real estate developer Linda Deer followed the guidance of trusted advisors in the spirit world. She has now written a book to help others benefit from the guidance of their spirit guides using her own life as an example. Hi, I'm Nancy Wigman. Join me this week for a conversation with the author of Guided, A True Story. Linda Deer, welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Maybe we should emphasize that word true. The twists and turns in your life were just, um, you wondered each page you turned, there was something new that was unexpected. For example, when you were young, you were a model. A department store asked you to be a model. Right. And then your mother stepped in and, and cut that career short. I mentioned that uh, you had an abusive childhood and, um, and you overcame uh, dis- extreme adversity to get where you are today. And people wanted to know how you did this. When did they start asking you to write a book? Well, that, it's interesting when you say they, uh, because it came, you know, when you get this guidance, it doesn't always come in the way that you might think it comes, like in an intuition or a sign or a dream. Uh, when it first started coming to me, was through other people. And that started in my late 20s. Uh, people that were my parents' age were asking me for advice all the time. And I thought that was bizarre. You know, what do I know? I'm just, I'm the age of their kids. And they were asking me for advice because they admired my intuition. So uh, they didn't really talk about the intuition because it was kind of weird in the, in the 70s, all right? To, to really say, well, it's your intuition we really want, to, we want advice from. But they, they asked me for advice, and they'd, and they'd say to me, they'd say, Linda, you need to write a book that helps people. And I was, okay, that's interesting. I totally don't feel ready for that. But that's how guidance speaks. It speaks in many different ways. It speaks through other people. It speaks to you. It speaks through you. It's, it sneaks up on you. <laughs> it's there in many ways. So that's when it really started, and it continued until, uh, in different ways until 1994 when my spirit guide actually appeared right in front of me when I happened to have a Nikon camera in my hand. And in the instant that she appeared and filled up the room, I, I captured her photograph, and shortly after that they came to me in a dream and they told me that, they appeared so the world could believe that I would write this book and that it, this book would be about relationships and that it would be easy to write. It took me four and a half months to write this book. Um, so that's, that's how it finally came through. And it took me another 20 years to bring this book into fruition, you know. Mm-hmm. It was just published a month ago. Well, uh, you were, at the time people first started asking you about that, you were living in the Sacramento area, right? I was, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, you said uh, that you didn't realize it would have a benefit for other people. But then um, it's not that easy. You say one of the tips, and you have sections in your book, you label them tips. And you say um, when you have a connection with your guides, you feel like it's too much to explain to anyone else. You don't think anyone else will understand However, once someone recognizes your abilities and sees your value in this area, they start seeking you out for advice. Right. That's true for everybody, by the way, Nancy. That's, just, that, that's not just me. That's everybody. So you, that's, you know, when people work with this type of, of uh, information, intelligence is what I'll call it, they get used to it. I mean, I did. I had it my whole life, so I came in with it. And for me, it was like my best kept secret, my ace. And I wasn't about to share this or tell anybody about this, especially I was raised, you know, I, I, I was born in 1952. In those days, you know, they, they just as well lock you up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just decided, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep this to myself. And I, being in the, in the family I was in, it was especially wise advice to do that. And my guides encouraged me to keep it under wraps. They didn't want me talking about it, you know. They didn't, they knew that, that that wouldn't work out real well. And so, and it would only interrupt what I was, what I was learning from them. So, um, you know, I can see why people, you know, don't talk about it. And then by the time people were asking me about it, they still weren't using the words like 
intuition and psychic abilities and you know a connection to your to the to another world you know they couldn't wrap their head around it so they kind of stayed away from that so they could it was palatable to them where they could just ask me for advice and get answers without having to learn to do this for themselves mm-hmm. and if they learn to do this for themselves uh, how what is the best time or state for receiving information from our guides well it's the simple things nancy it's when you're taking a shower and in that moment of you're you're relaxed you've got warm water on your body you feel great and that's when they slip in those little one-liners all right Mm -hmm. they're always with us it's it's like gps it's always on it's just that people don't always listen to it you know they don't pay attention to it so in the shower that's a perfect time to connect with those little insights and messages that come through i say little but they're really big in the morning before you wake up take an extra five or ten minutes to just float in that twilight between here and there and just let yourself either remember what happened that that night in your dreams or let the information that they want to convey come through you before you start getting amped up for the day simple things like that driving to work when you're kind of mindless you're doing mindless things sweeping the the floor at your house just mindless stuff that's when they slip in because you're out of the way my guest is linda deer and her book is guided a true story you mentioned dreams being uh, one way that uh, you might receive information and one dream that I suppose you might say it was reassuring when you were young yeah. you dreamed you had a dream about being uh, protected by a bubble yeah that was a great dream now this was uh, well into my life I was probably seven years old or so and I grew up in a, in a neighborhood that was um, you know going through a lot of racial conflict because it was in those times you know civil rights was kicking in and they were there was a real struggle for them to 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 you know to fight for their rights and there was a lot of tension most of my neighborhood were african american kids which by the way they were my friends of choice i i really could relate to them and in this dream but but we but there were fights there were serious fights in the neighborhood that you know if you didn't know how to fight and protect yourself you were in big trouble so i was um I was in the backyard, and in this dream, came, I all of a sudden was in a bubble. It was a translucent bubble where I was floating just high enough above the kids who wanted to beat me up, and they were hitting me with sticks and stones. And as they did it, the bubble would just float up ever so gently, just out of their reach, not panicked, not scared, no fear, total protection. And I, was, I knew from that dream that I would always be I wouldn't be a casualty of what was going on around me. I knew I would always be protected. Well, you went from that um, kind of scary situation to um, a culture where the, your peers were taking drugs. And yeah, that was the time of, of, in our culture then. Why didn't you take drugs? You know, that was really interesting. I, I didn't expect any of these things that were coming onto the horizon. I didn't think we were coming into a drug culture I didn't see any of that. But when it happened, I instantly knew these kids were reaching for, you know, they call alcohol spirits. <laughs> you know, and drugs are the same thing. They're, they're mind-altering, and people take them in hopes of reaching a deeper understanding of themselves, okay? I mean, I defended in a way because I understood that these kids were reaching for something that they, that they bypassed, that they missed, that I didn't miss, all right? And I'm not saying that I had it all figured out, Nancy. When I grew up and I had this connection with my guidance, it was so strong. I, there were consequences to this. I was an outcast. I was, I was laughed at. I was called stupid. I didn't get it. I was, all the things these kids were sure they had it figured out because they were, they were unanimous in their mass thinking okay in fact your mother had you held back third grade you had to repeat third grade yeah your mother yeah I had some real and you know I don't I didn't hate my mom Nancy my mom all she did was she laid things in my path that were that were extremely challenging (laughs) (laughs) that that I had they were like 
little, uh, it was like a, it was like a constant source of, of deep learning that she forced me to go through. Now, she didn't mean that. My mom was disturbed, okay? My mom was not, something was wrong with her. She didn't do it with that intention in mind, but that's how I, having this guidance on my side all the time, this intelligence that guided me, it, these are not woo-woo guides. This is not an escape, a place where you escape, you've got guides, and oh, all of a sudden everything's wonderful. It's nothing like that. It's, it's finally, you can see things for what they really are, and you can, because your guides don't try to make things into something they're not like people do, you can start to face things that were unimaginable, and that's how I was able to do it. Well, uh, I jotted down some of the adjectives you used through, during your book uh, to describe your mother. You said she was a liar, she was rude, she right. was angry, she was a bully, she yep. was cruel, she was depressed. <clears throat> and yet you do say, I didn't hate my mother, but you recognized that she was dangerous. Right. And you also say that uh, we choose the family we were born into in order to learn valuable lessons, but once we do, we can move on with the rest of our lives. Right. <laughs> now, that's a loaded gun, isn't it? Um, yes. uh, what was I thinking? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is quite a soul I, that I have here, you know, that chose that type of, of, of experience that my mom um, created for me that I learned through. How amazing is that? I sit back and still wonder about that, Nancy. I mean, I, I've ha I had my plate full. I almost didn't pull it off. Okay. In fact, you did attempt suicide. Yeah, I, I attempted it. I, there was a point where I could, I could not stand this anymore. I, you know, when you, when you go through it, and even with my guidance and all the help I got, it, it gets to a point where you just go, if this is all life is going to be for me, I can't do this anymore, you know? But what's interesting is when I, in my early, like as far as back as I can remember, my guides came through and told me this one line. They said, Life will get better for you as you get older if you can make it through childhood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I first heard that and I was going through this abuse from my mom, I thought, oh, that's, I grabbed on to the life will get better as you get older. Okay, I didn't think about if you can make it through childhood. It was like <laughs> something I couldn't wrap my brain around at that point. I just saw the hope in it, okay? So it was, it was, it was filled with hope and it was a warning that turned out to be chillingly true. And that was when I met that point, got to that point in my life in my, you know, in my, in late grade school, just before puberty, that I just couldn't take it anymore. I had run out of gas. And that's when I, I took my mom's pills out of the medicine cabinet. They were called, of all things, they were called Coke. <laughs> and that was something I couldn't do anymore. And I took them. And I didn't premeditate this. I just woke up one morning. And I was, I, was, I was empty of this world. I had no feelings at all. And I took them. I went to school. I went into the bathroom stall. I swallowed all of them. And the next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital, and my mom and dad were there. And my mom was screaming at the top of her lungs, it's not my fault, as she was swinging at me, trying to hit me. And my dad, it took everything my dad had to hold her back. She was just, she was so out of control. And, you know, that was the pivoting point right there. At that point, I, in, inside me, I felt like, okay, I crossed that, that, that crossroads, that threshold. It's behind me now. And, and it was a couple months later, I felt this feeling like, feeling like I was already an adult. Life will get better as you get older was in full force. And I could feel it. I wasn't there yet, but I could taste it, you know? You say after this suicide attempt, you uh, mentioned that you have tips in your book for the readers. And your tip uh, at that point, you say, your spirit guides know everything about the life you entered when you first came here. It's like a movie that's playing out. In my case, they saw that this moment in time would be where my life could be cut short because the obstacles were so great. It was my guide's job to see that I made it past that milestone. They had their hands full. When you try to leave this world and they insist on keeping you here, you know that your life has a higher purpose. It's true. It's true. Uh, and throughout Guided, it's not, that's not the only time that 
I had a co- close call, okay? And, and every time it was interrupted, and I, it was divinely interrupted, you know, and I knew every step of the way as things happened that I, even, I was even sloppy with my life at times, Nancy. Like, you know, I could take it or leave it. I knew, and I've always known, that there's better places to be than here. Isn't that, I mean, Hmm. it's true. I've always known where I've come from. And it's the same place we go back to when we're done here, all right? So I was never, I've never been afraid of any of that, you know? And I've known, I know something, I, it's like, it's like I didn't come in with the same amnesia as other people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they've, they've, they've captured me many times. That's what I call it. They captured me. They said, whoops, not yet, Linda. <laughs> You're not done, you know. And so here I am, Nancy. <laughs> I'm, now I wrote Guided, and, you know, there's something with this that they really wanted this book written. My guest is Linda Deer. Her book is Guided, A True Story. And when they're giving you this information, you're passing it along to us based on your experiences. And you encourage us. In fact, this is you call this rule number one. Everything that happens in your life happens for you and not to you. The decisions that people make usually have nothing to do with you. They're just living their lives the best way they can. It will all work out for you if you don't take it personally. Your guides see what's going on. So ask them for help when you need it. They will keep you on track. That is so true. You know, nobody here has the answers. They might be your friend. They might be nice to be around. You, people might even have nice families. That would be, a, you know, I know that some people do. And that's a nice thing to have. I think that's wonderful. And I see it, and I know it exists. But they don't have the answers. You know, no one has the answers like your guides do. The reason I say this, Nancy, is when when things go, when when Things are happening in your life, good, bad, in between, your life, all right? Your guides, when you're really tuned into them like I have been, the, one of the first things they taught me was not to take things personally. When somebody reacts, when people around you act a certain way, it's not you. That's them. And if anything, be like your guides. Be compassionate. You know, listen. Don't judge them. You know, don't get, take it personally. And that in itself, you'll realize that everything in your life actually does happen for you. It never happens to you because that's a victim mentality. And you're not here to be a victim. You're, you were here to live a full life, and, they're, and they're, that's why they're there to help you. They, they are, they, you came here with the amnesia, not your guides, you know? And all you have to do is listen to that GPS a little bit better, you know, and our lives would be easier. This world would be different. My guest is Linda Deer. Her book is Guided, A True Story. We talked about your mother, that she beat you. She called you an ugly duckling, and I might tell readers that no, by any means are you an ugly duckling. You're quite beautiful. But we haven't mentioned your dad. And there's an interesting section in your book where you say one day you ask him about religion, ask him if he believed in God. He said that from his perspective, religion was filled with hypocrites. He suggested that I would find my own way. This came from a man who had been groomed to be a priest from the time he was a boy. Both mom and dad were disgusted with the church, and I sensed that dad had been abused in some way, but he never talked about it. That says it all. That, that says it all. And my dad, my dad was actually... My dad was conflicted, no question about it. I mean, they both were. But um, my dad at least told me, he told me the truth. He did it without the drama. And that's the way I learned from my guides. Um, I keep going back to my guides because this book is about, about your guides. It, it happens to be a life about, it happens to be about my life. It's got to be about somebody's life, and it's about my life. But it's about the guides. It's about our relationship with our guides. And that... The fact that my parents didn't force any belief systems onto us kids. I have an older brother and a younger brother. They didn't force any of that onto us because that's what was done to them, all right? And they were, they, I think they were very wise in letting us find our own way, at least for me. It worked out real well. And, um, and it, was, it was my guides that really, that I was raised by spirit guides. That's ch- part one, 
There's four parts to guided. Part one is is called Raised by Spirit Guides, and it was it was just so intelligent. They, what they the way they taught me made so much sense to me. I was thankful that I made this connection because my family was dysfunctional, okay? And I really didn't have a lot to learn from that, you know? But I was grateful for that. My dad, when he said that, I was grateful that I didn't know at that time, but as my life unfolded, I realized how that was beneficial to my true, you know, development as a person. My guest is Linda Deer. Her book is Guided, A True Story. It's about her spirit guides who were her best friends and life coaches. And we mentioned rule one, not taking it personally. And then a couple of times, well, and your, your story, your life story uh, exemplifies this, that timing is everything. You say that in your book, timing is everything. And you'll be directed. If you listen to your guides, you'll be directed to just the right time. Right. In fact, here's, you mentioned you call this um, a tip. Well, some of them you label tips, and this one you call awareness. You say you just have to create enough room in your life to move through the motions, and you'll be directed precisely to the right events and the right people at just the right time. You can't chase it. You're always guided. All you need to do is show up, pay attention, and take action. That's right. <laughs> There's so much in that. And your life exemplifies that. I mentioned that you were a real estate developer, and when you listened to your guidance, you knew when to get out. I did. And not just at that point, and many times in my life, they came through and they said, okay, the, the guidance, first of all, Nancy, it has a shelf life. So people will get guidance and they'll say, well, you know, my guidance isn't very good. My intuition didn't work out for me. And I asked them, why is that? And they said, well, you know, I acted on it, but, in, but and I said, how, how long between the time you got the guidance and you acted on it, how much, how much of a time frame was there? Oh, a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going, okay, I see. Well, your, your guidance when it comes through, they come through just exactly when you're ready to get the information. And here's the key. It may not be a respecter of your convenience. <laughs> All right? So a lot of people will choke up and they'll say, or they'll second guess themselves. And the, the core reason why people do this it's because they don't trust themselves. And the, the reason they don't trust themselves is because they don't know who they are. The first thing my guides guided me into learning about was who I was. First curriculum in this lifetime. Learn who you are. And they put me through different events. They laid things before me that I, we all have free will, that I chose to step into or not. I call them all my experiments throughout Guided, you'll see where I talk about one experiment after another experiment. Nancy, I'm still experimenting, okay? I, I mean, once you do this, once you live like this, this is what we, the way we were meant to live, not freeze up along the way and say, oh, I can't take any more, quote, chances. You, you know, you came here to live your life. Don't stop breathing now. So that's how I feel. That's how it works. And that's how... We get in trouble. We have to go back to the beginning and start there and get that right and step, that in, step through the process so that you can begin to finally take action when you get this guidance. It's the hardest step for people to take. Well, I want to go back to what the, your guides told you, that life would get better for you as you got older. And you went through a couple of marriages. And I want to read your lesson that comes later in your book. You say, people spend countless years trying to find someone who satisfies their relationship list of qualifications and demands. You can never chase a relationship. In fact, you have no business picking your relationship in the first place. You don't find a relationship. It finds you. Your guides deliver the right person to you at just the right time. Your job is to recognize them when they show up. You will discover that you don't get to pick who loves you. And this is such a nice story as your story goes on after two marriages and when you just think, okay, that's it. And you were caught completely off guard by who? I, this is Ray. Mm -hmm. um, I was married twice before, and I did the picking, Nancy. I thought I knew what I wanted, and I went, I went right to work on picking who I thought was best for me. Well, I think that's what all of us think we I do. Know. <laughs> I know. And, and we pick with, you know, with our list. We, we mm -hmm. pick with, you know, what we think 
or somebody that we think our parents would like for us. Or, you know, it's nonsense how we do this, okay? So, again, we're better off just stepping out of the way and letting it show up. And, it, and when I did that, when I finally did that, in, um, I did that in 2003. I said, you know what? I'm done picking my relationships. I don't seem to be very good at it. So I'm going to leave it up to you. I had this conversation with my guides, and I said, if I meet the right one, give me a sign. And I said, otherwise, I'm just going to continue on on my own because I'm perfectly happy doing that. And uh, I let it go. And then Ray comes into my life, okay? And, he, and, we meet, and, and we meet a second time the same day, which the first time I ran away because he looked at me, and I'm going, oh, my gosh. He looked right through me. It was like, it was like such energy he threw at me, you know? And I just, it just it was like too much. And I, I ran out the door uh, of the coffee shop, and then later that night I ran into, we ran into each other at the gym. And he goes, you're the girl at the coffee shop. And, and, and uh, he started talking to me. And the first thing he tells me, he does a three-minute resume with, on me, okay? And he says, I'm married. And, and went, that well, right away, you're, that's on your list of no-nos. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to date a married rule. man. <laughs> I, I, never, I would never date a married man, and, and I never did, okay? So I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I let him do the talking. You know, he went up, blah, 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 blah. And, and I said, well, you know, I'll be friends with him, but I'm keeping this at a different distance because I'm not going there. Okay, he's married, broke my number one rule. So I don't know, it was about 10 days later. I was talking to a friend on the phone. At that point, Ray and I, we had gone to a little movie together, and we'd got, gone to listen to some jazz together. But I always had an exit plan. I always told him, after the movie, I'm doing this. After the jazz, I'm doing this. So he knew there would be nothing more. Okay. Well, I always made sure that I had do. this exit plan. So, <laughs> well, um, the, so the story... 10 days later, I'm talking to a friend on the phone, and I said, yeah, I, I met somebody. He's a nice guy, but there's nothing, nothing there, you know. And... And I said, his name is, is Ray. And she goes, we know him. He goes to the Sedona Film Festival every year. And she started talking. And out of the blue sky, out of nowhere, through the telephone line, like the old party lines, came a voice that said, lose your rules. He's the one. And so I dropped the phone. <laughs> and I picked, up, picked it back up. And I told my friend, listen, I'll have to call you back. And I didn't, there's no way I could explain this to her. She didn't hear it come through. I heard it come through. And it was uh, several days later, I put an email together, and I put it down on my tray, and I was busy doing other things. You know, would you like to go to dinner tonight? And I was, like, hesitant about sending it. Here I was, a master at following the, the shelf life of this guidance. And I still, I, at this point, I'm going, oh, please. You know, I, I, was, I was scared, Nancy, you know? But, they, but here they were picking, picking them for me, just like I said, if he was the one, give me a sign, and they did that. And, um, well, and, there was your sign. And then and we met for dinner, and that was the beginning of our life together, right there. Well, I'd like to end on that note because that's a happy note to end with. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you, Linda. Thank you, Nancy. My guest has been Linda Deer. Her book is Guided, A True Story. You can find this and other episodes of Nancy's Bookshelf on our website, mynspr.org. I'm Nancy Wigman. You've been listening to Nancy's Bookshelf. Our theme music is The Mysterious Barricades by Francois Couperon, performed by Warren Haskell. Nancy's Bookshelf is a production of North State Public Radio.